One of the most important types of experiments in chemistry and physics is called the line spectra experiments. In these experiments, you put a s sample of gas into a tube and you pass electricity through that gas. This is exactly the same thing that happens in a fluorescent light bulb nowadays. We have um, mercury that vaporizes and when the energy is added to that it releases light. So this is showing the light coming off of the tube with the gas in it and if you break up that light using a prism you find you don't get all the colors of the rainbow you only get certain discrete lines and it's these discrete lines that were the unexpected results of these line spectra experiments. Each gas gives a unique spectrum and the simplest spectrum is for the hydrogen atom. So before this was well understood people were able to come up with formulas that were able to replicate the lines that were seen for the hydrogen atom and one of those formulas is given here. E is the energy and the energy is related to a, an integer n. The energy is negative, a constant, divided by n squared. And the frequency of light that's seen from these experiments is given by this formula, where the n again is an integer, so we have two integers, one and two. At first, the integer part of this was the part that was confusing because if you think about a ball you can throw a ball with any energy you want but when you do this experiment you're only getting discrete lines discrete lines means you have discrete frequencies and discrete frequencies mean you have discrete values of the energy so if you only get certain values of energy, it must be because the electrons exist in certain energy levels only. Passing the electricity through adds energy to our system, and so the electrons bump up to a higher energy level. In order to return to the lower level, energy has to be released, and so this could be released in the form of visible light or ultraviolet radiation or something like that. Only discrete values of energy are seen. That's called quantization of energy. So this picture shows a staircase analogy to the electrons in an atom. The electrons start out at a low energy state called the ground state they get bumped up to a higher energy state or an excited state and if they want to release energy and go back to the ground state they have to release some form of radiation that is equal to the energy gap of the excited state down to the lower state so for example if we excite an electron in a hydrogen atom and we bump it up to the n is equal to 8 level, what wavelength of light would be emitted if it falls from the 8th level down to the 3rd level? So we can use this formula for frequency. And then we have the n1 squared and the n2 squared. n1 and n2, it really doesn't matter which one you call 1 or 2 because we're calculating a difference between two states. If you choose the wrong way to do this, you're going to get a negative frequency, which really doesn't have physical meaning. It just means the energy is being released. So if we want to calculate this, and get a positive frequency, we would substitute in the smaller value of n in this denominator. So this would be 1 ninth minus 1 64th. And this 
calculates out to 3.141 times 10 to the 14th hertz. But the question wanted wavelength. So we have to do one more calculation to turn our frequency into wavelength using the relationship C is equal to nu times lambda. We could solve this for lambda. That would be C divided by the frequency. And we know the speed C is 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. The frequency we just calculated. So we can get the wavelength 9.55 times 10 to the negative second meters, which is equivalent to 955 nanometers.